Hello and welcome back to my channel. This week I've been working on a mini project in our bedroom, this linen cupboard. So the view here is from our first home tour video when we first moved in and then here some shots from my camera roll of how it looked after we had the door changed and then once we had the ensuite pocket door installed into the back of the cupboard. So this was a completely empty cupboard, but whilst I was away in Florida this January, Simon made these shelves out of MDF and used MDF on the sides to allow the shelves to float without the need for any brackets, which keeps it looking minimal and doesn't cause any odd corners or awkward spaces. I'd been thinking about what I was going to do in here and finally settled on tongue and groove for the sides and the backs so that it would cover any of the joins and uneven finishes in the MDF and the plasterboard on the back. I measured out each shelving section within the cupboard so that I knew how many tongue and groove packs I'd need to pick up and then I drew this master plan of measurements. As with everything in this house, nothing is ever even or straight, so there are some odd measurements. I used my plan to start cutting down the tongue and groove wood strips, which would create my panels for each of the shelving sections. Fortunately, this Ryobi mitre saw that we used for making our DIY wheelie bin store last year, which I will link down in the description box below, can cut several pieces of wood at once by using the clamp. So this saved me some rather valuable time rather than having to cut each individual length of wood. I decided not to do anything to the shelves other than paint them, so with them being made of MDF, I first needed to give them a couple of coats of MDF primer so that they were ready for painting with my desired colour, which was Portland Stone by Rust-Oleum. You regulars might recognise this colour and this specific paint, the kitchen cupboard paint, from my IKEA wardrobe hack, which I will also leave a link to in the description box below if you haven't seen it, because it is still one of my favourite DIYs that we've done so far. Now, my original plan was to have contrasting shelves and tongue and groove. So the shelves were going to be this light Portland stone colour and then the tongue and groove panelling was going to be a really dark colour. I thought it would be the easiest option to paint the shelves first and to then paint all of the tongue and groove panels before gluing them inside the cupboard. This would mean no frog taping as all elements would already be painted and then I could just do any minor touch-ups that would be required. However, as with many things DIY, this plan did change. I first did a dry run with my top tongue and groove panel, which covered the top two shelving sections. Sliding it up from the bottom behind all of the other shelves and into position so that I could make sure it fit. Once I was happy, I started slotting each of the back panels together, sanded down any rough edges from where they'd been cut, and then gave them their first and second coats of my chosen dark paint. This is Faro, again by Rust-Oleum, and I use the matte interior wood paint, which doesn't require a primer, so it was perfect for going straight onto the bare tongue and groove wood. I left the painted back panels to dry for 24 hours before then using a no nails type of adhesive to fix them onto the walls of the cupboard. And this is where my original plan started to change. As I slid each back panel into place and onto the adhesive, I realised that I would need some filler to fill some of the small areas that just didn't look neat. I also realised that I didn't like the contrasting colours of the shelves and the panelling. Instead, I wanted the entire cupboard to be the dark and moody colour of Faro. So, instead of painting the side panels of Tongue and Groove before fixing them into place, I literally just popped them in as bare wood because I knew I was going to have to use some filler and then repaint the shelves in Faro. This just made life easier because I didn't need to be precious when I then painted everything the same colour. I could just use a brush and a roller and it didn't matter where it went. I had to do two coats of Faro on the shelves to cover the original Portland stone colour, but once it dried, I was really happy with the result. Because I decided to go for this dark and moody colour throughout the entire cupboard, I wanted to add some lighter pieces inside to get that contrast look that I originally wanted. 
I use these trunk style seagrass baskets to conceal the mixed contents of bed linen, cushion covers, blankets and throws. I then added two larger water hyacinth trunk baskets to the lowest section so that they're stacked on top of each other on the floor, again with various spare cushions and bedding inside. To remember what's in each one I have these handy black basket clips which you can write on in chalk pens if you like but I love any excuse to whip out my label maker. So I made custom labels for each basket and stuck them onto the black clips. As towels are the most frequently needed item out of the linen cupboard, I popped some spares on the smaller shelf. There is a gap behind all of the shelves so the air can circulate around the cupboard, but if you wanted to have extra breathability, you could create slatted shelves rather than solid ones. These are great in particular for airing cupboards where you have a heat source inside. So on the top shelf, along with the basket, I've put some spare toilet rolls. We have spares in various storage areas in each bathroom in the house, but then any additional extras can just live in here. I've also got our spare hand soap bottles on the same shelf. On the first of the middle two shelves, I have a dedicated bath section with some bath salts, which I've decanted from their original packaging into these tall glass jars with wooden lids and then made custom labels again with my label maker so that I can identify which type of bath salt is inside. This cute mini basket at the front has some bath bombs in there and then some essential oil bottles next to that. On the shelf below, I have some home fragrance to accompany the basket. I love these candles. This is one of my favorite scents and these jars are great for when I make my own candles once I've burned what's inside. Beside those are some glass spray bottles with fabric freshener in, which is nice for in between bedding washes to give it a quick freshen up. And again, I made my own custom labels for those so that they match in with the other items that I've labeled. And there we go, our linen cupboard is finally complete. Everything has its own place and it looks pretty nice, which is always my aim when creating spaces which have to be functional. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon for our next project. Mm -hmm.